will see sparse matrices. Now we already know what a matrix is. Matrix is a rectangular array of numbers arranged in rows and columns. A rectangular array of numbers, जब उसे हम rows and rows and columns में arrange कर देते हैं, तो then that becomes a matrix. Now we have already done matrix program in C programming, so we do know what a matrix is. Now we need to know what is a sparse matrix. So a sparse matrix is one in which majority of the value is zero. A sparse matrix, ऐसा matrix होता है जिसमें ज़्यादातर, mostly majority of the value is zero होती है. If a matrix contains sixteen values, then the number of val uh, zero values should be greater than eight. Then that matrix is called as a sparse matrix. वैसे matrix जिसमें number of zero values ज़्यादा हो compared to non-zero values, then those matrices are called sparse matrices. A sparse matrix is one in which majority of the value is zero. So this is a sparse matrix. Here I have 16 elements, and out of which only one, two, three, four, five, six are non-zero, and rest 10 are zero elements. So majority of the value is zero. Majority of the value is zero. So those matrices are known as sparse matrices. Now what is the sparsity? The proportion of zero elements to non-zero elements is referred to as sparsity of the matrix. So here 10 are non-zero elements and 6 are uh, 10 are zero elements and 6 are non-zero elements. So the ratio 10 is to 6 is known as the sparsity of the matrix. So the proportion of zero elements to non-zero elements is referred to as the sparsity of the matrix. Then what is a dense matrix? It is just opposite of just opposite of a sparse matrix. A dense matrix is one in which majority of the values are non-zero. So, एक ऐसा matrix जिसमें ज़्यादातर values non-zero हो जाएँ, then that matrix will be known as dense matrix. So, a sparse matrix. So, we will be dealing with a sparse matrix. A sparse matrix is one in which majority of the value is zero. Now. Why to use? Why are we using sparse matrix? When a sparse matrix is represented with a two-dimensional array, we waste a lot of space to represent that matrix. A big matrix है, जिसमें most of the elements are zero. और जब हम उसे two-dimensional array में represent करेंगे, तो हम लोग बहुत सारा memory waste कर सकते हैं. Let us see how. हमारे पास एक एरे है int a 100 100 इसमें 100 रोज हैं 100 कॉलम्स हैं और इस मैट्रिक्स में सिर्फ 10 ऐसे एलिमेंट्स हैं जो नॉन जीरो हैं बाकी सारे एलिमेंट्स जो हैं ऑल आर जीरो एलिमेंट्स सो इफ वी रिप्रेजेंट दिस एरे देन हाउ मच मेमोरी विल इट टेक इट विल टेक 100 मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 100 एंड द Data type is int, which will take four bytes in a 32-bit compiler. So we will multiply that, and it will give it will take 40,000 bytes of space. We have to allocate 40,000 bytes of space to store this matrix. And the main thing is the most of the elements are zero, of no use. So and so to access these 10 non-zero elements, and the other thing is this is the storage problem. The other thing is the time problem. To access these 10 non-zero elements, we need to access the, just these 10 non-zero elements. But we have to scan all the numbers and that means we have to scan it 10,000 times. And after scanning it 10,000 times, we will get those 10 non-zero elements. So it will consume a lot of time. So that is why we use a sparse matrix which works only on those non-zero elements present in the matrix. It, it will extract only those 10 non-zero elements or it will work on those only those 10 non-zero elements and so it, uh, it will not be wasting any time or storage. So that is why we use sparse matrix. So this is the use of a sparse matrix. Now, what are the advantages of a sparse matrix? 
i have already told you it will help us in reducing the storage it will occupy less memory and we have to scan it uh, scan the values very less number of times so it will also reduce the computation time to a very high level so these are the two main advantages of sparse matrix now we need to represent sparse matrix how do we represent a sparse matrix so we represent sparse matrix in two ways array representation linked representation so we haven't studied linked lists so we will not go into linked representation right now we will be focusing focusing on array representation and it is called three tuple or three column representation now in array representation the three column representation the three tuple rep uh, representation as the name suggests we will use three columns okay we will use three columns there will be three columns one will be row in which the one will be named as row it is named as row but it is a column in this we will write that index of row where non zero elements are located jahan par bhi non zero elements located hai us uska row uske row ka index hum log yahan par likhenge when we will be solving the example we, uh, it will get cleared now again the second column will be column here we will write the index of column where non zero elements are located and at value we will write the value at that row and column let us see an example to understand these rules so this is the three column representation where we will be making three columns row column and value now how do we do that we are going to study now now it is three tuple representation or three column representation now here see here it is a matrix 0 1 0 0 5 0 4 0 0 2 0 3 0 3 0 0 now in uh, in uh, computer memory it will be 0 1 2 3 3 rows 0 1 2 3 columns means four rows and four columns or this is uh, this is how in a computer an array is represented represented this will be this element will be 0 0 this element will be 0 1 this element will be 0 2 this element will be 0 3 and so on this will be 1 0 this will be 1 1 this will be 1 2 and this will be 1 3 but for our say for our convenience we will take it as 1 it as 2 it as 3 it as 4 and this is a, this one as 1 2 3 4 so we will take like that so let me just write it again 1 2 3 4 it is just for our convenience if you feel that the previous method is good the previous you are comfortable with the previous one you can do that now the first thing we will write the rows index of the rows where non zero elements are located now first in the first row in this first row i have written or we write the number of the total number of rows the total number of rows is 4 and the total number of columns is also 4 so we have written that and here here we have written the number of non zero values 1 2 3 4 5 6 so total number of rows total number of columns and total number of non zero values we have written in the first row now we have to write the index of the row where the non zero element where the non zero element is located so this is 1 2 3 4 now where are the non zero elements located the first element is here it is at 1 2 so in rows we have written 1 in columns we have written 2 and at that point and that point what is the value 1 then again where is the non zero element located here it is at 2 1 so in rows we have written 2 and in columns we have written 1 and at that point the value is 5 so that is 5 then again the th uh, next element here 4 it is at it is in the second row so here, here it is 2 and it is in the third column third column 
so 3 and what is the value 4 in this way we have written this this and this so it is very easy the three column representation is very easy and that is how we represent a sparse matrix in a three column representation now we will see one more example this was a squared matrix now we will so we will uh, solve one more question one more matrix one more spar matrix and we will try to find the rows columns values or the three tuple representation so it is easy now moving on to the next example now we can number it as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 so there are seven rows and six columns so we have written that seven rows six columns now count how many values are there so one two one two three four five six seven eight that's why we have written eight now the first element this one it is in the first row so for one it is in the fourth column so four and what is the value five then the second element it is in the second row in the second column so we have written two rows so two in rows column two is two in columns column and the value is four then nine this one is in the third row so we have written three here this one is in the fifth column so we have written five here and the value is written nine and in this way we have written all the values so this is how we represent three tuple representation so we have studied how what is a sparse matrix what is its advantage why it should be used and how we represent how can we how can we represent it in three column representation and in the next slide or in the next video we will be looking we will be doing solving a program we will be doing a program in which we will be accepting a sparse matrix and we will and the output will show the three column representation of the sparse matrix so we will be doing that in the next video